Look at this. What a difference a week makes. Last week I was playing in the snow. This week I've got sunglasses and a trench on and I'd go as far as to say I am a little bit too hot. I um, put on a really thick jumper today thinking it was still cold but it's really not at all. It's actually really warm. This is glorious. I have been stuck in the for about three days straight, just squirrelled away doing work. And I've got quite a lot to do again today. So thought I'd get up extra early this morning to get some vitamin D. I don't want to go back inside now. This is the mood boost that I think so many of us need right now um, here in England because the weather's just been so grim. Still kind of windy though. <laughs> I'm back and I've declammed, although I'm looking incredibly shiny still. No vlog last week, as you saw or didn't see. Um, I feel like I need to apologise for not vlogging last week. And I know so many of you will be like, don't apologise, it's fine. But I'm a profuse apologiser, so it's just in my nature to say sorry all the time. I did start vlogging last week. I got about two days into it and just started to bore myself. And at the best of times, I know I am quite a boring person. I'm fine with that. But the fact I was boring myself when I was watching the footage back, I just thought nobody needs to see this kind of content. So I decided to throw the towel in and did a wardrobe review video instead. So if you've watched that video, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's left comments on it. Things to share that happened last week that were slightly interesting. Number one, I watched a documentary on Netflix called The Dawn Wall, which was incredible. It is about two guys who climb a part of, is it El, Capi, El Capitan or El Capita? It's a big sheer face, uh, El Capitan. It's a big rock formation in Yosemite National Park and there's a part of it that is just so sheer that no one has managed to climb it in one go. And the documentary is, well, I would say it's maybe even a film. It's very long, but it's very good. It follows the journey of two guys on their quest to climb, free climb, may I add, this part of El Capita, which is called the Dawn Wall. Um, and it's all about the events that lead up to the point where they get to the point of deciding to climb the Dawn Wall and also the preparation that re is required to climb the Dawn Wall. I think there was about six or seven years of prep until they finally were ready to climb it in one go. It is incredible. Um, lots of unexpected things happen. It's just brilliant. I highly, highly recommend. Second thing to note, last week I finished If We Were Villains. I can't even remember if I actually mentioned I'd started this book. I don't think I did. Anyway, I started this after I read In the Distance by Hernan Diaz, which I didn't like. I'm not going to talk about because I just didn't like it at all. Anyway, I really, really, really enjoyed this and I can totally see why there are such heavy comparisons between this and Donna Tartt's The Secret History because this is virtually the same story. However, the pace of this is quicker and it's not quite as long as The Secret History. I would also say, without disrespecting Donna Tartt's writing, this felt less pretentious than The Secret History. I enjoyed The Secret History, but there were so many points where I just felt like I wasn't clever enough to be reading that book. And I think that was due to my lack of literally zero knowledge of Greek literature and language. This follows seven academics, uh, seven theatre academics who attend a prestigious sort of school of the arts, you know, this type of school that teaches theatre, dancing, singing, um, and there is obviously a death within the story and it is all about the events leading up to and surrounding the death of that particular student. These students basically only study Shakespearean tragedies, so there are lots of references to Shakespeare within the book, but I don't think you need to fully understand them to enjoy the story. Somehow my brain managed to retain quite a lot of basic Shakespearean knowledge back from high school days which did sort of help me understand a lot of parallels in this book. My main takeaway from this is that the seven main characters were meant to represent sort of typical characters within a Shakespearean tragedy and a lot of the time the plays that they were studying within the story there were lots of parallels between the plays and events happening in their life. 
Um, but that's all I'm going to say on the book. It, it, I really, really enjoyed it. And I do think if you like that genre of dark academia, but you maybe struggled a little bit with this secret history, give If We Were Villains a try, because I do think you'll enjoy it. And then the third thing I have to share is that I have partnered up with Farfetch again to give you all a 10% off code, which I will pop down below. It is 10BBFF. You might remember my partnership that I did with them uh, last year where I picked out that beautiful chocolate uh, castle trench. I, I love that coat so much. And the Le Mer camera bag. So this time round, I've partnered up with Farfetch and they have challenged me to pick some new icons for spring summer, which I thought was very interesting because I personally find it difficult to tell if something's going to be an icon within my wardrobe until I've kind of got it and worn it a few times. But I think I've su successfully, su 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 successfully picked some new icons, both in the sense that they are icons from the brand and icons in my wardrobe. I'm actually wearing a couple of pieces now, so I'm going to just take the camera and uh, show you what I picked out from Farfetch. The first thing I picked is a La Mer icon, I would say. It's their twist shirt that they have become very, very known for. It's a style that they do every season in a bunch of different colours. And this season they've done it in this light sage green colour. You can barely notice that it's green. There's just a very subtle hint of green. It features the signature exaggerated collar that La Mer do on so many of their shirt styles. And then it has this really interesting twist feature that you button up. I'll try and undo it and show you how this works. So the actual placket is curved. I don't know if you can notice that, it's curved at the bottom there so that the twist sits nicely on the body. And then you've got this tie bit in the middle, um, to the side here, sorry, which uh, means that this bit sits fully covering this bit. Let's see if I can do this up one-handed. Where's the button? Come on, come on. <laughs> Yes, I did it. Quite literally, a twist on a classic. I like what's going on here. It's a very nice point of interest to something that would normally be quite plain, shall we say. I'm not going to use the word boring. Um, I like plain things. I like minimal things, but sometimes I do like it when something's just got a little bit of something something going on. And I feel like this shirt is it. I went on the Le Mer website to just uh, get some styling ideas and this shirt is quite often paired with like high-waisted straight leg denim with a really exaggerated turn up so I've paired mine with something similar-ish just some straight legged denim that slightly but they don't hit the floor but they just sort of skim my shoes uh, which leads me nicely on to these absolutely exquisite mules also from Le Mer that I picked from Farfetch a thing of beauty actually do you know what I'm going to take one off That'll be easier to show you that way. Um, I haven't actually worn them outside yet because I feel like it's. N I'm not quite at the stage yet where I'm ready to lose socks and wear an open toe. But boy, I cannot wait to wear these outside. They're this beautiful sort of brown oxblood colour, just absolutely gorgeous. And I think will look brilliant um, paired like I have today with white denim. Um, tailored trousers, obviously. I must admit, like I, I wear flip-flops and I wear sandals quite often in the summer, but I don't particularly like having my feet, like my toes on show massively. I, I feel quite insecure about my feet sometimes. So these are a very nice sort of summer shoe without showing too much toe. I have two more things to show you from Farfetch. Um, I'm just going to sit back down again to show you them. Okay, this next item is also another pair of shoes and you will have probably seen me shuffling around the house in these already. They are the Birkenstock Bostons. Sorry, I was going to call them Arizonas there. Arizonas are the buckle ones. These are the Birkenstock Bostons in the oiled black leather. So they almost look navy. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. But they've kind of got a slightly, I guess, worn in look to them already versus the regular black Birken, um, Bostons, which are very sort of shiny and jet black. These have got a much more sort of faded look to them. I absolutely love Boston's as a style. I've got the wool, like felted wool ones. Got them last year at some point. I think I got them just before uh, lockdown started actually. And I just, I've worn them so much. And I'm now at the point where I kind of want to wear them outside. So I picked these out as a kind of outside version. Unfortunately, they haven't been worn outside much yet. I have worn them outside a little bit. 
Um, but I think in the summer with really big baggy jeans and a t-shirt or a vest, these are going to look really, really cool. And my fourth and final item from Farfetch is a piece of jewellery, which only arrived this morning actually. Now, when you shop through Farfetch, Farfetch isn't actually a retailer that holds stock. Farfetch is a platform that kind of hosts loads of different boutiques around the world. So when you shop through Farfetch, it's quite nice knowing that you're supporting a small independent boutique somewhere around the world. So when you do large orders, you're essentially ordering from lots of different places and they tend to, your items then tend to arrive at slightly different times. So this piece of jewellery just arrived this morning and it is an ear cuff from All Blues. Just bring that a little closer so you can see. Now I'm such a creature of habit with jewellery. Well, I have become over the past year, I pretty much live in my gold hoops, which I've taken off just so I can put this on. Some simple gold jewellery on my hands and then a gold chain. So I kind of just wanted to push the boat out a bit, you know, try something new for summer. And I thought an ear cuff would be a subtle way of me just playing around with my jewellery. I think. Oh. oh, is that it on? Oh, that was easy enough. <laughs> What do we think? I'm just gonna look in the mirror so you can see. Oh, I'm into that. It's quite cool. Like, it's subtle, but it's different, you know? I like that a lot. Might look a bit better, actually, when I've, with hair sort of tied back. Or just tucked behind my ears like I normally wear it. So they're the four items that I picked from Farfetch as my new icons for spring, summer. Um, absolutely love all four pieces and I think you'll see me wearing them quite a lot over the coming spring and summer months. Farfetch is just awesome, like it's, it's the place where I buy a lot of my clothing from, especially hard to find pieces because they're always so good at, I feel like all the boutiques are really good at like stocking those hard to find pieces and also Farfetch now have a pre-loved section which I do find myself browsing quite a lot because a piece that is on my sort of like ultimate wish list that I just don't think will ever come to fruition is a Cartier watch. I really, really, really would love a Cartier watch. One of the sort of, you know, the slim triangular ones. So I do find myself browsing the Farfetch pre-love section just to sort of swoon over them. I will leave all the details below and links to these items um, if you wish to shop and use my code. So I just tried an online meditation session. That was just what you saw me doing, lying on my front room floor. I was invited to like an online Zoom meditation on behalf of Maison Margiela Fragrances to celebrate their new fragrance, Matcha Meditation. Very, very nice of them to uh, invite me to that. They also sent me some bits to create a matcha tea, which was very nice. I have to say that I really struggle with meditation and I think it's because meditation Meditation and yoga tend to be the two things that get recommended to me the most when I talk about anxiety and I totally get why those two things are such a great aid but for me I feel like I'm the other end of the spectrum and the things that help me with anxiety are exerting loads of energy. That's my way of switching off, so going for a run, sweating loads. Um, there's something to do with meditation, It's I don't know if it's the bre breath work or the combination of the breath, the kind of switching off of the mind, being still in the body that actually makes me feel quite anxious, <laughs> which is um, the opposite of what it's supposed to do. But I think it's more because I get a bit fidgety, both physically and mentally, I get quite fidgety after about 10 minutes of attempting any sort of meditation or yoga. I just have a, a kind of like a maximum with it. And um, yeah, that, that was nice though. It was, it was a nice opportunity to be off my phone and away from my computer screen for sure. So thank you very much to Maison Margiela for that.
Whoa, check out this evening sunset. That is something special. I've got quite a full on day today. I'm filming a project for a brand that I've worn for years and years and years. I don't know if I'm under embargo with it all yet, but I won't say who it is just in case I am. But to give you a hint, and this is, um, you'll be able to tell what it, who it is straight away, but it's, Ar it's one of Arquette's sister brands. And like I said, it's a brand I have worn for many, many years and have supported for such a long time. And they've given myself and another creator um, the freedom basically to create a styling video in which we style the new spring summer collection, which I feel like it's, I mean, I feel very humbled because I've, like I said, I've supported the brand for so long and it's so lovely for them to recognize the support and kind of recognize my creativity and be like, actually, we're handing the baton over to you now um, and you can do something that's a, a lot bigger and will sit on their website, I believe, next month. So I'm, quite nervous because I don't want to um, F it up, obviously. And I'm just, I'm trying not to stress myself out because I'm doing all of this on my own from my home, obviously, and I'm having to do a lot of it uh, virtually with this other person. So we're like recording um, virtually. It, it's all very complicated because obviously of COVID, we can't actually meet up and do the video together. So we're having to do it separately she lives this person lives in Copenhagen I won't say who she is just in case again I'm not allowed to share but she lives in Copenhagen so we're kind of doing it virtually and um it's just full on because I've I'm styling six or seven looks I think and it's things like this that like make me realize when productions like this take place how important like a stylist is a, an assistant a videographer and I'm trying to do all of those things on my own and it's quite full on like I've been, yesterday I was tidying up and trying to like set up the space and do some interior styling so I had a nice backdrop to shoot against, like buying additional flowers and getting everything set up nicely. Then this morning I've been like um, setting up a ring light and trying to get, get to grips with this which is why I feel like I need some sort of video assistant. And then I've also been steaming and it all sounds like really simple stuff that you think oh I can do this totally on my own, it's fine until you realize actually these things take quite a long time. Like steaming, I love, I love to steam, but boy, does it take a while. Um, so yeah, I've just set up my ring light. I'm pretty much ready to go and start filming. Uh, um, I've never used a ring light before and they're, aren't they meant to make your skin like look incredible and meant to make you look absolutely flawless. I've actually plugged it in. Maybe I'll turn it on and test it here. Are we ready? Oh, oh, okay. I wonder if I put my camera behind the ring light and what it looks like. Oh, that's in the way. Okay, yeah, it does make you look pretty glowy and flawless. Obviously, I won't be that close to it. Um, right, I'm going to turn this off and actually get started with this because I'm going to be doing this all day. Um, but I just wanted to let you know what I'm up to today. I will not subject you to this sweaty face for too long. The weather this morning is like the most perfect running weather. I had the most glorious run this morning. Anyway, I just wanted to say something um, while it's at the forefront of my mind. If you've watched The Dawn Wall and you're looking for something along the same lines as that, then I highly recommend a film called Free Solo. It's on Amazon at the moment. I think it was done with National Geographic, so it shot really nicely. I watched it on Wednesday night and my jaw was just wide open the entire time. It's proper nail biting stuff. It actually features one of the guys who is in the dorm hall. And this one's about a guy who wants to climb part of El Capitan, which is the same rock formation that the dorm wall is on. But he wants to do it on his own without any ropes and it, and, and in one go as well, obviously. I, it, wild, it just, that's the only way I can describe it. The whole time I was watching it, I was just like, I couldn't believe what I was watching. It's super interesting because you, you learn about his childhood and how the, his interactions with his family and other people growing up have really shaped his mentality surrounding the nature of the type of climbing that he's doing and the safety of it and obviously the chances of plummeting to his death. It's, um, yeah, it's really interesting, but it's also 
really motivating and the whole time I was watching it I was just thinking I haven't been out for a run in over a week I this and it really like spurred me on to get out there and running um, and that's when if you watch my running Q&A that's what I mean about what kind of watching motivational things I do find it doesn't even have to be about running but just kind of watching a motivational film or a documentary about someone who sort of overcome overcomes the odds or something like that or really pushes himself helps me with um, motivating myself to get out there to run so I just thought I'd mention that for anyone else who's on a bit of a climbing uh, documentary thing at the moment like I am. This week's vlog seems like it's mostly going to be me giving you recommendations because I have another recommendation. I've just been sat trying to bullet journal whilst listening to the new off menu podcast with Sue Perkins and just had to stop bullet journaling because I was crying with laughter. I don't know how widely known Sue Perkins is outside of the UK. She's quite a national treasure for us here. But if you are familiar with Sue Perkins, um, I recommend giving it a listen. Off Menu as a podcast in general is very, very funny. They have some very good guests. But this one in particular has just had me crying. It's so, so funny. Um, I'm trying to make a neckerchief work, which, you know, when you kind of introduce something new into your wardrobe, say like a new hat or a new sort of affectation that is feels a bit slightly out of the norm from your usual style and then you kind of feel a bit like weird about it that's how I'm like with the neckerchief but anytime I see someone in a neckerchief I think they look really cool so I, I'm trying to try one myself I'm trying to try one um I'm going to show you what I'm wearing actually I'm going to pop out just because um the weather is just so nice I'm going to go out again I'll show you what I'm wearing first so my friend Joe sent me the uh neckerchief I will link Oh, be right back. Right, I'm back. Sometimes I'm convinced that the delivery man waits until he's, because he can sometimes see me through this window, waits until I'm stood here talking and then rings the bell. And it's such a piercing bell. It just goes right through me every time. Anyway, as I was saying, this scarf uh, was sent to me by my friend Jo. She has a very beautiful brand that I will link in the description box. I'm wearing a navy jumper from Navy Grey. This is just their standard crew neck cashmere jumper that I've had for ages. and where all the time it's been featured so many times in the vlogs. Jeans are the keeper cut crop from under the story. So I've got these in two sizes. I think I've already said this. I've got them in a 25 and a 26. The 25 is more uh, figure hugging around my hips and the 26 I have because they're, I, I just like to have that more relaxed option. However, I put the 25 in the wash recently and I put them on a cold wash. It was a fairly slow cycle. Like it didn't spin fast or anything like that. And I swear they've shrunk. And this happens so much with denim. I put them on a cold wash and then I let them dry naturally. So I don't tumble dry them, anything like that. I don't even put them on the radiator. And they always end up like jumping up a couple of inches. And it really bugs me. <laughs> and I don't know what else I can do to stop that from happening because it doesn't really get much more delicate than putting jeans on a cold wash. Anyway, I'm really trying to avoid putting this pair in the wash because they're starting to... Um, like really soften up and they feel really nice and slouchy and comfortable and I'm just terrified if I put them in the washing machine um, they're going to shrink so yeah I'm guarding them with my life at the moment and then I'm wearing my Dr Martens and I think I'll probably just put on a trench I think I can get away with it I've just seen a guy walk past in just a t-shirt I don't know if he's being overly ambitious um, but yeah I think I'll put on my Uniqlo trench you know the, the bluey one I'll put it on now. Every time I try and think of when I bought an item, my sense of time is so warped because we spent all of last year in a pandemic. So anything that happened in 2019, I keep thinking happened last year because nothing happened last year. Does that make sense? So I was just about to say, I bought this coat last year. And then I was thinking, wait, no, I didn't buy this coat last year. I bought this coat two years ago. Anyway, pointless ramblings. I've put on my Uniqlo U Block Tech trench coat, it's the menswear one. This coat's probably one of the best outerwear buys I've ever bought. I could never see myself getting rid of this because it's so versatile and I just bring it out time and time and time again. And it was really unexpected buy, I just randomly added it to my cart on the Uniqlo website thinking it looked kind of cool. Um, and it's become one of my favorite trenches for sure. I am really into this outfit. I like it a lot. 
After months and months of neglect, I finally started to organise the bookshelves and try and make them look somewhat curated. This whole space has been quite daunting and I've put it off for quite a while. It's kind of been used as a bit of a dumping ground ever since I moved in basically. I've just been shoving things on there in the hope that once I finally get enough to fill it, I will then be able to make it look nice. But a couple of weeks ago I was thinking, it's going to take me ages to get to the point where this is properly full so why not just make the most of what I've got and try and spread it quite thin and I actually quite like how it looks it's, it is styled very minimally but I'm I don't mind it ignore the bottom that's not quite done yet and the Sonos doesn't normally live there I've got a real nice mix of all my favorite ceramics and bundles of my favorite books the right hand side however is a different story, I haven't really got onto this side. I mean that side took me long enough because my pedantic visual merchandising ways meant that I was chopping and changing and trying different arrangements for like an entire day. This side, I'm thinking I might take the main bulk of these books and see what they look like behind these glass doors. Because I don't really have anything that I want to display behind glass, you know I don't own loads of lovely glassware or crockery or anything like that. Someone ages ago actually made quite a good suggestion of taking the doors off and having this entire section open, which I think would look really good, but unfortunately I don't have anywhere to store these doors if I take them off. So the doors are staying, I'm going to see what the books like look like behind glass and then hopefully replicate what I've done there on this side. I'm hoping having the main bulk of the books in the middle will balance, it will be balanced out by the sort of more minimal spread out sides but at the moment I don't really have much to put here so I think over the next couple of weeks I'm going to do some shopping for vases, ceramics, um, just all like little nice bits like that. Some other homeware additions to show you. So I've been trying to look for cushions that match the sofa because unfortunately hey don't do a cushion that matches the sofa exactly. So it's been quite a mission because although, I mean, you'd think finding just a nice creamy beige textured cushion cover would be easy, but it has been quite a task. So I've got a few contenders here. In the middle, I've got this really squidgy boucle cushion from Maid. On the left here, I've got this beautiful textured jute from uh, Linum. My friend Lindsay recommended Linum actually. Such a good selection of colours and fabrics and all really, really well priced. And then on the right hand side here, also from Linum, is a linen and cotton blend. So they're all much of a muchness, as you can see, very, very subtly different shades of beige. Texture wise, I absolutely love the made one, but colour wise, I really like the dupe one. I think this is a really good colour match. But, like I said, I like the texture of that one. So I'm thinking I might have a combination of this one, this one, and then another boucle one, because these actually come as a set of two, which is quite good. And just have those three on the sofa, and then maybe I'll pop this one on the roly-poly chair for now. Um, I will link these cushions below, but these, have an 18 week lead time. Honestly, I think I ordered these back in maybe October, November. I'd forgotten that I'd ordered them and then they appeared a couple of days ago and I was like, oh yeah, those. Um, another homeware addition is a new plant pot, which I'm very pleased about because this guy has been living in its original plastic pot with cellophane wrapped around it so that water wouldn't leak out onto the floor for so long. Just really struggled to find a plant pot big enough online. I can't seem to find like really nice big plant pots online, you know, the sort of really big ones that you get in the garden centre. But this is a really nice size. This is from the new Firm Living Spring Summer Collection and this is the new cashmere colourway that they've done this pot in. I ordered this through Life Story in Edinburgh, but I'll obviously leave it linked below. It's such a nice plant pot. So you can actually take that off the stand and it's got drainage holes, which is really handy. Um, very pleased that it's now in a bigger pot because I was getting really worried about it and I actually thought it had root rot because of the browning on the leaves but when I repotted it the roots were fine so I'm thinking maybe this room just got a little bit too hot because I kept it out of direct sunlight which has been recommended to me. 
thinking maybe it needs a bit of a stick or something, otherwise the leaves are going to keep splaying outwards and eventually droop down. Right, one more homeware addition. I'm just going to take you through here. Everything is a mess at the moment, so I'm going to leave the camera pointed down. I have a new print. It's this David Hockney print that I got through uh, Curated Copenhagen, which is this amazing website that has just the just the most amazing selection of really unique posters. Um, it's not living there, by the way. This is just where I've popped it for now. It's going to live here. I just need to get a picture hook back up a bit. This section of wall is like the perfect size for it. I, so Curated Copenhagen currently can't ship to the UK, which is really frustrating due to Brexit. So I was quite savvy and had a friend living in Stockholm and said, can I ship this to you? And then can you ship it to me? So that's how I got it. But I think Curated Copenhagen are working on getting things sorted so that they can start shipping back into the UK again. I've just been sat setting up my bullet journal ready for next week because I like to sit each weekend and get it all set up for the week ahead. And I was about to sit and talk about it because I've got a new journal that I want to show you all. And then realised actually a lot of this vlog has been me shoving lots of new things in your face so I thought to save you yet another new thing because I've also recommended quite a few things I thought I'd save it for next week I've also noticed that this week's vlog has exceeded 30 minutes I just don't want to drag it on too much longer for the sake of dragging it on so yeah next week I'll probably cover bullet journaling and also might do some spring outfits next week you know because the weather is I mean I feel there's been a real significant change in the last week hopefully it lasts and I'm going through real waves of feeling really inspired and then really uninspired. And when I'm feeling inspired, I've been jotting down lots of notes and lots of outfit ideas so that when I'm uninspired, I've got something to refer back to and just thought maybe it might be helpful or interesting for anyone else who's feeling a little bit uninspired. I don't know what it will be. Maybe just like some spring outfit ideas or some styling ideas. I'm not sure. I'm not going to have like loads of new stuff. I'm just going to sort of like go through my wardrobe and just see what um, I've got going on in there that I can sort of make look spring-like. Uh, yeah, so maybe that's what next week's vlog will be centered around. Thank you so much for watching this week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next vlog.